Well, last year we were able to get in, get the property pretty well leveled out. A lot of the brush, debris, all cleaned up. Uh, as you can see, a few mountains that we've created that need to be burned down and uh, doing a little burning now as we speak. But also in the meantime, was able to put together our architectural plans as to location for the garage, which will be placed right here about by the boat and the pump house. And then down by the RV are the reserve as well as the primary septic fields. Also during the last year, had to have the local electrical department come out and remove a telephone pole that was in the middle of the property. That took a number of months to get done, but they were able to move it here to the north side of the property. It left us a little stump to be pulled out, but uh, we'll get that up out of there. And then continue our uh, clearing of the land. Also, uh, we'll take care of a few of the trees that had come down. One during the storm took out the new power pole, actually, and they had to replace a lot of the power lines to the neighbor's house on both north and south sides. So a little bit of concern with the neighbor's trees, but uh, we continue to address those as the build goes on. House foundation will go right here, do a stem wall uh, with footing and uh, 32 by 32, straightforward, nothing too flashy, uh, but yet maintaining the 75 to 80 feet distance for code and uh, county regulation from the lake. Always a major concern when you're building on the lake, not to mention all the extra forms and uh, that you need to have filled out and mitigation reports that need to be taken care of. So keep that in mind should you be building on a lake property versus building just on land uh, with no lake around. Got to concern yourself with runoff. So everything was cleared, but we have since had a little bit of overgrowth in the last year. So we're going to have to bust out a backhoe and uh, do a little bit of resurfacing and take care of some of the growth that has taken place. And then we'll get to laying out our locations for the house foundation as well as for the garage. Well, we managed to find out that the boxer on the back of the 
deer doesn't work really effectively. So I'm going to have to weed whack a little bit here and knock down some of the brush uh, just to give us a little more uh, dirt to work with and see if we can not scuttle that off to the side. And then we'll continue to put together uh, the layouts for the foundation location. We'll run our perimeter lines as far as for the boundaries on the north, south, as well as down by the water. And uh, we're already aware of the distance that you need to be off the street location. So then we'll come around and uh, lay our locations for the garage. Just going to be a 20 by 22 on the garage with about a 20 by 22 landing pad area in front of the garage. And we hope to pretty much do just pavers in front of the garage for its landing pad. And then we'll do crush rock as the driveway as well. Uh, trying to keep everything as permeable as possible. That was a big factor when it came to putting down uh, in our plans what would actually be cement or asphalt or just rock. And permeable ground seemed to be the most efficient. It also cut back on a lot of the drainage concerns that we had. We literally are going to have to have drainage coming from the garage here, as well as we'll tie it in with the pump house and run that all the way down towards the water to the runoffs for the house. And those will all go into a catch basin that is about 65 feet away from the water. Uh, again, a lot of concerns when it came to stormwater runoff mitigation uh, when you're living on a lake. So do keep that uh, as part of your consideration when you're looking at property to purchase and develop uh, that might be on a lake versus say something up and back here, as you'll notice, uh, those back properties, you're not going to deal with water runoff there. So onward and upward to the garage slab preparation.